Hello and welcome to Bloodsport MMA. Why is Paulo Costa against Darren Till the fight to make? For us, the fans, for Dana White, the UFC, and for the two fighters. Find it out in this blog talk. Paulo Costa and Darren Till are both kind of in a similar path or part of their career right now. Both are not at the best place. I mean, okay, Paulo won his last fight, but he won one fight out of his last three. Darren Till won one out of his last five. So, and both are kind of the same age and everything. It just lines up perfectly. Now, Paulo Costa had a good win against Luke Rockhold. Of course, it was more of a brawl, not a very technical fight, but a, a nice brawl that we, um, I think, all enjoyed, right? And he really looked good there. He looked in shape. He looked like the Paulo Costa that we saw against Romero. Like the Paulo Costa we all thought, or most of us thought, will fight for a title and be the champion one day. And I still believe that he has the potential to be a champion. The problem is, Paulo Costa was not Paulo Costa against Izzy. You can tell me whatever you want. You can argue in the comments, no problem. Write down below. Write your hate in the comments, I don't care. Paulo Costa against Izzy, that was not Paulo Costa. I don't know what exactly happened to him. But I think he was just not really focused. He was more happy with the fame and everything. and wasn't in the war zone anymore because he took, uh, the way he went down against Izzy, he took these shots against Vettori. He took Vettori's best shots. He took Luke Rockhold's best shots or Luke Hockhold, how, how, how he calls him. He took Romero's best shots. He took them like a champ. Against Izzy, he went down like that. So you can't tell me that Izzy has more punching power than a Gil Romero. You can't tell me that. Of course, Izzy has, has higher, uh, better accuracy and stuff like that, but Paulo Costa in that fight was not Paulo Costa. I don't want to take anything away from Izzy. Izzy is a great champ. Izzy had a great performance there. And against Vettori, Paulo also look, didn't look perfect. I mean, like he wasn't in the, his best mental or physical shape. I mean, if you miss, miss weight like that, they had to reschedule the fight to a different weight class and stuff. You can't tell me he was in his prime shape. Against Rockhold, hey, he looked like before the fight, during the fight and after the fight, he looked like in perfect shape mentally, physically, spiritually, everything. So I believe if he continues on that path, he's on a great way back to the title. On the other hand, there until last four hours, last five, yes. <laughs> I mean, the loss against Bronson. In the stand-up, Bronson didn't, didn't stand a chance against Till. But everybody that's not a hater, everybody that has a little bit of brain and has watched Darren Till throughout his career, that you saw that something was wrong with him. Same with, like with Paulo Costa against Izzy, but with Darren Till it was clear it was an injury. He declared it after the fight that it was an injury. He said it. And you really saw the injury affected him. I mean, he has 78% take on accuracy. Uh, take on defense. <laughs> take on accuracy. Take on defense. And he got taken down by Derek Bronson, who of course is, is, is a good wrestler, but Derek Bronson is not, is not the, um, it's not Kobe Covington level or something, something like that. Derek Bronson is a good wrestler, but he took Till down like it's nothing. And I believe Darren Till would beat Derek Bronson nine out of 10 times. And it just was not Till that night. It was not the real Darren Till because of the injury. It affected him. Darren Till's problem is he spars very hard a lot. That's what we hear from him. And his problem is he's too much of a warrior. If he's injured, he just goes to the training that next day again and trains as hard as yesterday. The problem is if you feel some kind of an injury, it's always smarter for your longevity, for everything, to Maybe take a day off or maybe take the training a little bit easier. Try to, try to whatever part it is, the collarbone, I think it was uh, with him. Try to do training that does not affect this part of your body. Because, okay, it's maybe not cool to not train as hard as you want to for one week or two weeks, yes. But then it maybe it's healed again, you can train normal again. But what's even better is if, like Tom Aspinall did with his knee, you always say, no, 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 I, I, will, I will get to my rest. I will get to my rest and still continue to train hard and hard and hard. Through your injury, a small injury becomes a big injury 
and give you a half a, year, half a year layoff instead of just two weeks of a little bit less training. You know what I mean? That's his biggest problem, in my opinion. He's often, often injured. But he's in a great camp right now. All-Star Gym, Hamza Chimaev. I think they have a great spirit there. The work ethic there is amazing as of what we see. And I believe Darren Till is a champ. I believe Darren Till is championship material. His Muay Thai is off the charts. He has, in my opinion, the best Muay Thai in the whole middleweight division. And you can hate me. You can say, yeah, there, and don't, but don't come at me with Israel Adesanya or something like that. Muay Thai is no spinning shit. Pure Muay Thai fundamentals. Elbows, knees, body kicks, head kicks, uh, moving out of kicks instead of just blocking them. All these, all these fundamental Muay Thai stuff. Darren Till has beautiful fundamental Muay Thai. Beautiful. You saw it on display against Wonderboy or perfectly against Whitaker. I mean, Whitaker is one of the best midweight of all time and Darren Till stand and banged with him. And I believe Darren Till could have won the fight. I would have scored it a draw, but you can give the fight to Till, of course. Rob Whitaker won the fight by unanimous decision, but Darren Till dropped him with a beautiful elbow and it was a very, very close fight. So you see Darren Till can hang in with everybody in the cage if he's fit, if he's healthy, and definitely with Paulo Costa as well. So both are kind of not at their highest point, but both are ch championship contenders in my opinion. Both need to fight. Of course, Paulo Costa has his hand broken, so that's the biggest problem there in the matchup because Darren Till wants to fight two times until the end of the year, Seth. And I would like the fight to be the next fight for Till, but Costa is definitely out until I would say end of the year and that doesn't line up. But maybe Darren Till, I don't know, has a build-up fight against, not a can, but you know what I mean? Maybe like against uh, Duplessis, who is a good, good fighter, a very dangerous fighter, but he's not ranked high enough in, in the rankings to give you a real push in the rankings. So if he beats Duplessis, he could then fight Paulo Costa by the end of the year, maybe pay-per-view. I would like a pay-per-view because they're both very good talkers, would be very from press conference. I would not like them to headline a, a fight night. Of course, it would, would be fun as well, but uh, the fight would be amazing anyway. Please don't give us Apex. Darren Till belongs to a crowd. If they give their until to, uh, if they give us their until an apex, I will rage. But why not UFC 282? 282 December 10th, Las Vegas, Team Ballerina. Maybe I'll go there if this works. I try to go there. That would be amazing, man. The press comes would be so funny. It would be amazing. Can you imagine Paulo Costa there until? Both very funny guys. I think they would respect each other, but still, both strikers. Both technically and, and, and from, from the power standpoint, very advanced. Both like to stand and bang. Paul Costa has great takedowns. Tarantino has great takedown defense. Everything lines up perfectly for the fight. They're ranked right behind each other. Makes perfect sense for me. This matchup is a gift. I'll say a gift because this fight will be, you could take your popcorn out, chill in your, in your, in your seat and watch that fight with pure joy because I can guarantee you that would never ever, I would bet my whole money that this would never ever be a boring fight. I'm never, ever, ever, ever in a boring fight, lad. So write your opinion in the comments. What do you think would be the best matchup for Till and for Paolo next? Do you agree with me? Do you say blood? What are you talking about? What the fuck is that? Makes no sense. Write it below in the comments. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Support me and most importantly, Eat your goddamn vegetables. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye. Bloodsport out. Eat your vegetables.